All right, KMR, Kyle Mohan, Rotary Engine. We got some brap. We're back, brapping it up. So this is a pretty cool project that came through. It's actually an early side plate, so 12A based side plate, 13B, where we've taken 12A side plates, early, um, I believe 1979 through 85, um, some variations there. I think these are actually 83 to 85, if I am not mistaken. But basically, they're pretty strong plates, classic plates. They could be used in 12As, 13Bs, truck motors, the Repoos, the early RXs. Very versatile. Um, they're becoming more and more rare. So this project came in for both porting and resurfacing the lapping of the surfaces. Um, we also matched it up to some brand new GSLSE housings. So this is a early version of where a lot of people, rotary enthusiasts, race engine builders, race car drivers, hot rodders were taking uh, one motor's components and combining them with another motor. Now this isn't really far off from versions that were available from the factory because you did have the Repoos and the early RXs with four port motors that were 13B based. Um, you also had the 10As um, and early twin distributor 12As um, which all had variations. So not to be mistaken with these plates which are very specifically from the 12A RX7s. But anyways, the four port design was a pretty classic design, but in the RX-7 um, from 83 to 85, it was actually a six port, similar to the Renesis motor or similar to the 1986 through 91 naturally aspirated American model RX-7s, which were a mechanical secondary. So jump into hot rodding. This is 12A side plates with GSLSE rotor housings making a four port 13B out of components that are still available as far as the rotor housing goes, but hard to find as the side plates goes, which is again then my advocacy for lapping and resurfacing where we're able to bring side plates back to a nice flatness and reusable quality similar to OEM. Um, I don't believe these need to be nitrided. Um, I've never seen a side plate be the failure point of a motor in regards to wear or failure because of lack of nitride or nitriding. Usually that's related to improper building, specs, or cleaning procedures, um, which these plates still need a lot of cleaning before they could be used in a motor. So. An interesting build. Um, I thought it was kind of cool to talk about it, and it's a new port design I've been working on. Um, I've used my KMR Turbo four port template in the past for bridge porting these early 12A or 13B motors, um, but through some testing, I felt like we were losing a little bit of bottom end for what would be a street or performance configuration. Um, obviously with the race configurations usually cutting into the water seals where you had a traditional bridge, GT bridge, giant bridge, J bridge, anything like that where you were cutting into the water seals. Um, this is a little more modern um, based off of turbo motors or just the idea that you don't want to compromise your water seal, you don't want to compromise your head gasket. For performance, um, you're looking for reliability on, and longevity while still seeking uh, the performance gains of a small bridge port. So we kept our primary bridge slightly smaller, um, limiting its duration and uh, limiting its volume, but still benefiting from a very early intake port timing and matching that up with our secondary ports, um, but not extending it quite as far. Uh, the street port itself is matched on all four plates, so our closing timing is all the same. Um, but we're basically staggering the volume of our bridge intake opening so we get the best performance possible. We're trying to not lose as much bottom end as a traditional bridge port does, 
but we're still trying to bring in ample volume for a naturally aspirated configuration with these plates. Um, so the customer gets a mean sound, great performance, good reliability, and they can wrap it all the way home. Um, and let me just lay the exhaust side on here and you'll actually see we've got our eyebrow. We leave a decent amount of water jacket area. So again, we're not compromising the head gasket nearly as much as a traditional bridge. It still has all of that OEM landing and it's not perfect because I don't have my dowels. But right here you can see we've got our bridge. And if I bring some light through, we've got a very nice opening bringing in air and volume substantially earlier. Again, talking about rotary timing as if it's cam timing. This is a substantial change to not only volume, but the duration that this port is potentially open. So that's a little KMR Tech Talk. Thanks for watching. A little more cleanup. This one's shipping out. We love the brap. Make sure to check out the t-shirts, the porting templates. We'll drop some links below. And let me know what you guys want to hear about and talk about. That's a wrap.